What's going on guys? In today's video, I'll be showing you three early game strategies to help you win early game fights. These are strategies that I see so many average players not doing and even some pros too. In the first half of this video, I want to go over these strategies and in the second half, I want to go through some pro gameplay and show you some examples of how these top tier players implement these strategies into their gameplay. Before we jump into all that, be sure to go and drop a comment letting us know what you struggle with in the early game. Anything we don't cover in this video, we'll be sure to cover in a future video. And while you're down there, please make sure to subscribe, like and hit that bell for more high quality Fortnite content in the future. So the first strategy I want to talk about is advantage and disadvantage. In the early game, every player isn't going to have a purple pump, stacked heals, minis, 200 HP and full materials. This means that it's most likely that one team is going to have the loot advantage over the other. Let's take a look at a visual example to show you what this might look like. Here's the loadout of me and my duo against the loadout of the team we are about to fight. Me and my duo's loadout are on the top half and the opponent's loadouts are on the bottom. So let's take a moment to think about who has the better loot advantage here and who has the disadvantage. If you said that we had the advantage, you'd be correct. So let's compare them. Me and my teammate both have effective long and close range weapons, but so do the opponents. However, we do have a slight advantage over them here as we have the legendary minigun and they just have assault rifles. So let's look at the materials. Our team has a combined 66 builds, whereas the opponent's team has a combined 54 builds. Again, this is another slight advantage that we have over them. So let's go into ammo. This is where the minigun shines as I have 208 bullets for it in the early game and my teammate has three clips of AR ammo. In comparison, each of the opponents only have two clips of long range AR ammo each. And finally, let's look at the shields. We have three minis and three big pots between us, whereas the opponents only have one mini and one big pot. Let's do a quick summary. We have better long range weapons, more materials, more ammo, and three times their heals. Clearly, we have the loot advantage over the opponents in this fight. So how do we go about getting a loot advantage and assessing if you have a better loot advantage than your opponents? Well, since you can't see your opponent's inventory, you have to assume based on where they dropped and what they loot. To give you a simple example, if I land on a house with five chests and my opponent lands on a house with one chest, the chances are I would have the loot advantage. This is where knowledge of your drop spot comes in handy. Watch where your opponents land and try to figure out how many chests they can loot before you fight. If you want to learn more about your drop spot, you can go over to lootlake.info for a full breakdown of the map and the chests and floor locations. Let's take a simple example here of Salty Springs. We can see here that White House has three chests in it and it also has six possible floor spawns. Now in contrast, if an opponent was to land a Poverty House, there's only one chest for them to loot, along with the six possible floor spawns. Chances are, the player landing White House will have the advantage. Now, how do you know when not to take the fight? Well, you have to apply the same logic as before. If you feel you have a disadvantage, you may want to continue to loot other spots in the PY to give yourself a better chance at winning the fight. In this situation, the player who landed Poverty may rotate to Blue House to loot the chest and the floor spawns there too. One rule I like to apply to myself is to not fight if I don't have a shotgun, AR or SMG, shields and a couple hundred materials. Instead, I would just disengage and try to get more loot before engaging in a fight. Okay, so the second strategy I wanted to discuss is material efficiency. Material efficiency is very important in early game fights because there's no easier way to get yourself eliminated than not being able to protect yourself with builds. So many deaths that we've seen in the early game have been caused by players not having enough materials to fight and having to make panic plays because of it. So to avoid this, you should find the high yield material spots at your drop. These will be cars, trucks, rocks, large trees, anything that gives you a lot of materials in a short amount of time. An example of this would be the flagpoles on top of Agency. They give you around 50 metal for two swings of the pickaxe. Let's look at this replay from the FNCS console finals in week 4. Notice how the player lands on a chest and then immediately goes outside to farm the metal cars and trucks. Within 30 seconds of dropping, he already has over 200 metal. Remember this comparison of loot from earlier? Despite having the loot advantage, we lost this fight. And do you know why? It's because my teammate had only 8 builds and ended up in the open as an easy target. He dropped on the beach and if he'd spent the extra 20 seconds harvesting there, he probably would have won that fight and could have gone on to get way more points that game. So for your games, find out where the high yield materials are and ensure you harvest these early on in your looting path. 
This way, you will avoid running out of materials when you engage in that first early game fight. Okay, so the last strategy in this video is all about positioning. Positioning is so crucial in all fights, but especially in early game fights. Ensuring that you have a high ground vantage point over your drop spot and enemies can be crucial in dealing chip damage and securing eliminations on opponents. In your early game looting path, try to gain control over the natural high points on the map along with the areas that have the best loot. Notice how in this example I dropped onto building one of the rig, which is the highest point on the POI. This is so that we can have the best vantage point to deal damage to the opponents over the drop. Let's take another example from Slurpy Swamps here, where control of the top of main building gives you great vantage point to deal damage to enemy players. Another aspect of positioning that you should consider in the early game is the angles of your POI that give you a right hand peek. Right hand peeking is such a crucial part of every fight within Fortnite, but it's even more important within the early game when you have lower materials and you have to rely on natural cover to protect yourself. When assessing your drop spot, look for areas that provide you with a really good right hand peek that gives you great visibility over your opponents. Okay, so let's just do a quick roundup of the strategies we've been through so far. Firstly, we went through how to gain and assess the advantage over your opponent. Then we went over material efficiency and how to create a loot path that provides you sufficient materials to fight. And finally, we went over some key positioning aspects to your early game fights. So let's take a look at a pro early game fight and let's analyze how they utilize these strategies. So let's look at Enzar and Goose who fought against Train H French and Sinzao in Holly Hedges. So let's look at who is the advantage and who has the disadvantage. Goose and Enzar drop to the northwest and west houses, whereas French and Sinzao drop to the middle and northeast house. By looking at the map alone, French and Sinzao definitely have the advantage here, as they'll be able to loot the entire east and south side of the POI as well, whereas Inzar and Goose are stuck with the two houses they dropped in. So let's take a look at their loot right before they fight. All four players have an assault rifle with all around the same ammo, but Goose does not have a shotgun and Enzar only has a grey tactical, whereas French and Sinzao both have green tacks and SMGs. Goose and Enzar have 8 minis and bandages between them, but Sinzao and French only have 1 mini and a medkit for themselves. The big loot difference we can see here is that Sinzao and French have 126 builds between them in comparison to Goose and Enzar's 49, which is a clear advantage. So let's see how this fight plays out. Okay, so as we saw there, Train H French got absolutely destroyed by Enzar and Goose, despite having the clear loot advantage. And why was this? Because of Goose and Enzar's great positioning, giving them a clear right hand peek, ensuring that they were able to beam French. So what happened to French's teammate Sinzao? Well, he escaped, and this was all due to one of the points we discussed earlier, material efficiency. This fight should have been a relatively simple 2v1 situation. However, both Enzar and Goose run out of materials. This forces our aggressive team to disengage to farm out the house underneath to get enough materials to build up. This inevitably leaves Sinzao escaping at the lost opportunity in Goose and Enzar to get another point for the elimination. So just remember if you're fights, that 10 to 20 seconds early game spent harvesting a little bit more materials could be the deal breaker between winning and losing a fight. Okay, so let's go to a second example. Here we're checking in with Kiriachi and Letwick who dominated their heat in the FNCS this weekend. Let's look at their first fight and see how they played it. Notice how their opponent Force is holding the position on top whilst his opponent harvests below. He's a really good power position here to overlook the entire Slurpee. Kiriachi and Letwick know this however and aggressively push up to take this spot. Just look at the amount of materials they expend to gain this high ground. From there onward, they retain this height for the entire fight, continually pressuring the opponents until Kiriachi beams one dead with his burst rifle. Force is then left alone with no materials against two of the best players in the EU server and is easily taken out. I'm not saying that if he had harvested more materials he would have survived here, but being stuck in a corner without any certainly didn't help. And there would have been a possibility that he could have gotten away and escaped to play the rest of the game out if he just had a little bit better material harvesting off of spawn. 
So there we have it. These are the three early game strategies that you can implement into your gameplay to help you win more early game fights. Try to always gain the advantage over your opponent and assess this based on their looting path in comparison to yours. Set your looting path to ensure you harvest high yield materials shortly after dropping to ensure you have enough materials to fight. And establish the power positioning on your drop spot in regards to height and right hand peaks and dominate from these positions. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and learned a lot. This has been Resub for Skillcap.com. Thanks for watching and see you next time.